Hello, everybody. Um, nice to see everyone and and or see your names as you come into the the cubes. Welcome to the Brooklyn Rails Wednesday reading series. This is the um, hundred and eighth uh, of these weekly readings, and we're very uh, happy and honored to have this one curated by Oscar Moises Diaz. And the title of this reading is The Eclipse Lounge, which may be um, expanded upon as we go further. And we're very happy to have Oscar, as well as Raquel Gutierrez, Sheila Maldonado, Monica Teresa Ortiz, and Yvette Siegert reading with us. Um, before I introduce Oscar, I'll just say a couple of things um, by way of information. Um, if you're new to this reading series, you might pay attention to the chat as we go uh, along over the next hour or so. There will be information about the readers and their various publications and endeavors, uh, links that'll be posted, as well as uh, in basic information on the Brooklyn Rail. The um, current issue is the October issue, Oscar had poems in the September issue, so you can go check those out. And um, my name is Anselm Berrigan. I'm the poetry editor, and I collaborate with the great staff here to help make these readings happen. Um, I'm going to uh, turn things over to Oscar, poet, astrologer Oscar Moises Diaz, currently serves as a contributing editor for Asphalt Magazine and a poetry and translation editor for Fence. They were a 2020-2021 inaugural curatorial fellow at the Poetry Project as a member of Tierra Narrative. Other recent poems can be found in the print and online September issue of the Brooklyn Rail. And I noticed also that there's some very fascinating talks on astrology that um, Oscar's participated in that you can find on YouTube, if that's all right for me to throw out there too. Please welcome Oscar Moises Diaz to the project. I mean, to the rail. <laughs> it's a poetry project, it's still in my head. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all for coming um, to the Eclipse Lounge today. Um, I was thinking of what to title this reading, and I was like, oh, well, let's just ground it in the calendar and in the sky and in the weather. And, you know, we have an eclipse in a couple of days. And um, I love eclipses because they can be so much about risk taking and big endings, big beginnings. And I feel that sort of rush when I read these poets I've gathered today. And I love how they think about history, how they think about place and time. So yeah, I was like, oh yeah, the Eclipse Lounge. Um, so I'm going to read a couple poems. Um, I'll start with some in the rail actually, in the, that came out in September. Let me start a timer. Um, this first one's called Birthday Candle. Birthday Candle. Ibn Ezra says the moon is festivity, the revealing of secrets, rules over peaches, just wanna listen to Kai's peaches, let the clink of ice cubes announce me. This new Polaroid getting too close like Kawasi, I'm offering grapes off the stem. Rocking that rain or Werner Fassbender airport style on the tarmac, one titty out. It's really the Keanu sons. Been reading medieval poems, monks, horseback, archery, being crowned coolest for the day, passing out by the river. My paraclassetry on days are over, but meat's frying and other street heightens. Ibn Laban says best time for an enema is when the moon is in Libra or Scorpio applying to benefics, increasing in light. Drew's sweet 16 motorcycle ride with Keanu. Celebrities haven't talked like that in decades. Ordered that new perfume with the controversial reputation. Its defenders say it's sophisticated and unruly ripe. Cool. Um, this next one's also in the rail. Uh, it's called Coliseum. Coliseum. The whole sky reflected on windshields want the world to turn on like that. Attention toward quiet, quiet arrows, halo in the hand easing itself into the tub. There again in the shots of the dog navigating the forest. I love that the bird sounds are the wrong coast, realer somehow. Yola Tango is actually so good here, towards the story, but not necessarily into it. Penultimate shot of Osos by doorways watching, the most hated in the family, dolphin eye of mine. 
The Colosseum is a circle. This is my big day out. Calendars from 1993 can be reused in 2021. Wartime drag queen chant. Debes dejar las tripas en el suelo. A Colosseum is a circle. Edgar says underworld descents are always about necessity. A birth chart is a circle. Writing this on Gina Rowland's 91st, a nun tells me prayer isn't something she does. It's something she makes herself available to. She tackles the problems of the world from a hidden place. In candle magic class, we learn that to make circles is to claim a slice of reality, like a land deed. That star that never touches the earth hovers. The Colosseum is a circle. And this next one's a sonnet. Um, it's called Slacker Sonnet. And it's like kind of about this like beach day I had with a bunch of like queer poets. Um, slacker Sonnet. Heaven our engine talks on the beach, Ellery's towel, Moravian devotional card side holes, increasing darkness shows the holiness. I always got a friend on the inside to open the exit door, chasing the ice queen down the shore, building bird's nests, that's the music of my people. Lydia says the key of D is like the D in God. We should buy a metal firecracker, save on parking. When you only got one microphone, you gotta walk close together. You're onto something when people start to lie about being in the film. It's not about wanting just anything, but everything. You all seem to love going around inventing special occasions. Sandy Cookie falls on my face. People wonder about that last line. And I was like reading Cookie Mueller on the beach and she like, you know when the book falls on your face? Um, this sonnet is new. Um, it's just called Sonnet, although I kind of wanted to call it Mating Call. But I don't know, you know, it's in print already, so but sonnet. Don't want to title a poem Iguazu Falls or think about your sublet ad. No good furniture to fuck on, but trust that I do. Plus prickly pear tea, plus a new smeg four slot toaster. All the gossip you'd be the first to hear. Like my, my, like my lunch with Clementina Suarez's niece. Written in an unpublished journal, how right before a poetry recital at some theater, Rocky Dalton making out fondling a man's ass. Grand piano speeding down the ramp. Angry owner asking who's gonna pay for this. First woman in Honduras to wear shorts, to wear lipstick. That wrote my favorite poem, A Worker Dies, replies. I wouldn't even give you a single plucked hair from my pussy. So there's some like spicy gossip. Um, I'm gonna read like a really old poem. It's feeling kind of cinematic. It's called Buenas Epocas and it's got an epigraph from a Ragnar Conjardinson installation that was like at the Met and I used to like work at the Guggenheim and be depressed and like go to the Met and like try to revive at like the other museum, I don't know. But there was this like, it's like six channel video installation. It surrounds you, it's volcanoes, aftermath, all that. Um, and, and they sing and they say like death is elsewhere. And it was like in my head. So yeah, buenas epocas. My mom was the same age as I am right now in this vehicle, 25 in 1979. A, walk, a hanging cable car to the kingdom of the bird in the cloud. My brother Saul is crying on the way up. These Coney Island dreams come back in 98 on local TV as a young festive Sofia Vergara. The reopening of the Teleferico in the Hansa, San Jacinto, but I've already landed in New York. That country was so beautiful before the war, the sophisticated bridges, their modernity, my mom's usual rant. She's holding this food beeper unimpressed. We had this gizmo before the Americans. Mia Pizza had that airplane technology, hit the buzzer when the waiter comes over. Mijo, we'd be more advanced in Costa Rica if it wasn't for the war. I can never be my favorite one car Y film, get that motorcycle because this is how her first husband died. She married him in a hippie style wedding dress. That bridal look sweeps well into the seventies because Salvadorans didn't want a new decade. Everyone noticing more and more of those black vans mysteriously parking around the city. I like this one, which got something in that old Woodstock style. President Colonel Molina's mustache is shiny under the spotlight. The Miss Universe pageant, the National Gymnasium, Paul Chodos de Humos 11 days later at the university. Molina opening all his gifts from every miss. We had our own Beatles, but they were from a Sulutan. I like the song too, kind of like the Doors, but they're Los Kitty Ups. I'm shocked that this car lecture on Wanako rock and roll. She spent that era hands raised in a Pentecostal church, but a hitazo is a hitazo. The American reporter would say it started out as a beautiful day. 
the mild air in the square, yellow balloons just everywhere. Were you staring at the stack rotating bodies of poultry at Pollo Bonanza? Or were you looking up at that star sculpture at Restaurante Shifa and wondering what far north could be? All those yellow balloons popping and piling onto the steps, those two and a half to three minutes, the Metropolitan Cathedral? I wish I knew where you were during that lunch hour in 79. The last song on the Buenas Epoca CD ends in the car. I started up from track one again. Maybe you'll say more, or maybe we'll just listen. Um, check out my time. Let's see. So I finished this poem and I think it's time. Yeah, let's do some hot off the press. Um, Deccan 21. I come from a city famous for ugly public sculpture, except that fountain monument to the sea. Saul never did build gets up that big at Jesus, would have been taller than the one in Rio. This backyard eyesore two years now, do we even have money for this? What's the use of a fountain so close to winter? Abu Mashar says, Abu Mashar warns of the summer moon. Why are all these builders here? We'll be wishing we could afford meat. House now empty, fountain annoyingly left running, screen door wide open always anticipating the next blow, too much life at once. Oh no, I gotta get back to basics. Thales chose water, and Eximenes air. This is no Villa Caregui or Nishat Ba, but at least plant correctly. We need four equal sides parts, seven circles around this fountain. These need to be replanted. Wet soil, my fingernails. Who did you all hire? I catch my breath. Dad smirks, points out that all these new plants surrounding me are perennials. So that's funny. And that prediction came true, like all those food prices now, like I wrote this last year. So, you know, Abu Mashar never lies. <laughs> um, this is also new and I'm not sure if it's done. And it kind of, this one freaks me out. It's like maybe the most like necromantic thing <laughs> I've ever written so far. It doesn't even have a title on this pink paper. Um, dive bar anecdotes of your saintly interventions, how you rescue poets from rabid dogs or public buses set on fire. My urge to misbehave, get kicked out. I only flew down here for my hotel, host, hotel style ending to die a complete stranger in the city of my birth. Now I'm in this bar, dark barn in Vermont, but here you are 20 feet tall. Abu Mashar says people like me know what's in the heart of others, but don't share our own. Maybe you're rescuing someone else. I pull up your chart while I wait. The dodecatomori of your ascendant, how clearly it spells out danger from soldiers. Domicile moon, still in sect in the first house. Retorius notes that as a mark of high priest. Even the third triplicity lord of the seventh, you're checking off all my boxes. Tour guide says, if I hadn't coughed, he wouldn't have noticed me. Second time he's checked the barn. Everyone is worried and looking for you. You didn't think we'd forget you, did you? Oof. Think about eclipse moments. Um, let's see, what, what else do I got? Um, there, one second. Deccan 34. Carnaval de San Miguel canceled only once during the war, large orchestras in the core of the city further out, septets, further and further out, quartets, edge of town, two drunk singing. My mom humming in New York. Famous bullet pierced one side of this cathedral, flew right through the other. Humming helps when I'm anxious. Austin says it's like Blade Runner. Ibn Ezra mentions a man going home. Dr. Olomi speaks of a man with tongs holding incense. The Hayat al-Hakim, a man with two bodies pointing. If you ask me, it's a life of leaving the engine on. That scene at Lake Erie so snowed out, it all became negative space. The Isthmus is an artery, eight, pu eight of cups on this pew, stranger than paradise. Fall deep in love with tracing, but don't hammer anything down. Isn't that the sweet spot that theologian aims for? The Isthmus, my thicken initiation, my poems, bus stops like this one. With a Sharpie on the bench, I write down a secret rule that I learn over and over again, which is that air tastes different everywhere you go. And then I'll end with like a little short one. Um, it's inspired, but it was actually turned into like, a, an arts art song for soprano voice a couple of months ago. It's based on the film Burning by Lee Chang Dong. 
Uh, it's called Deccan 11. Orange, blood red, purple, then navy. Ibn Ezra mentions a beautiful maid desiring wind, music. Stephen Yun's cafe magic trick, or imagine a talisman that prevents rain, snow, even clouds coming from the sea. The sunset tour. Ever feel like a country of abandoned greenhouses? Does the weather judge? So much of this film is the sun accounting. When the claps begin to wane, I realize that all we have is the invite. After decades of Noribong scenes, Miles Davis takes us between the wharf and weft above. Thank you. And so up next, uh, we have Yvette, and I'm super excited. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you so much, Oscar. That's like a wonderful energy of your poetry to kind of bask in. I, I almost feel shy reading now because I'm still thinking about your work. But thank you so much for the invitation. And thank you to Anselm and Carolyn and the Brooklyn Rail. Um, and especially all the poets gathered today. Usually I'm in the UK, but I happen to be trapped in Long Island somewhere near Port Jefferson. So hello from these unceded lands. I'm going to read maybe a little bit more earnestly than usual from my forthcoming book because I just closed the edits on it yesterday. Um, yes, yeah. and so I'm, I'm almost near tears constantly. And the book is dedicated to my grandmother uh, whose birthday would have been yesterday. She would have been 113. So I'm going to read just a few poems from that collection and interrupt it with just two brief translations by the Salvadoran poet Amada Libertad. So I'll start with the title of the, the, the first poem of the collection, Atmospheric Ghost Lights. This is called Valley Girls. Valley Girls. Los Angeles, late summer, 1979. The Santa Anas singe the valley. All year, I wait for winter to be born. I hold my unformed lungs up to the light. Airless heat, the fading fractal tracheal buds cramp like bonsai blotching in a satin box. To name me was to name you without knowing, like Theo male ordering holy water from the Jordan to make me little evening well. There will always be too much wonder, too much work to do. Sing, my strong grieved sister of the wrath of this long summer. Sing for me, sing me. And what I usually preface that poem with is a reference to the beginning of freshman year when we all read the Iliad. In, in school and it was my way of I when I read the poem when I read the epic I didn't understand it and I thought that strong grieved meant those meant grief instead of those protective things that the Achaeans of the Greeks wear over the shins for protection in battle so the idea of that mistake made me want to rewrite the Iliad from the perspective of the Salvadoran civil war which my mother's family lived through uh, and it's the first in a series of poems about my sister, whom I'm named after. And she was born right at the beginning of the, of the, of the war uh, and only lived for about for a few weeks. So the, the, the bookend poem that goes with this one is a poem I wrote at, as an undergrad, but I keep it in here because it's the poem that started the whole project. So this is called Self-Portrait as My Sister's Keeper. When they named you, they named me without knowing. I can sign for you every day when I think no one is speaking. Perfume, grill work, the strange mythologies of our suburb, you are in all of these as if when living happened to me, you were kept not secret, but hidden in my delight. You are my looking glass. I am your map. Between us, there is a footstool and many countries. And here, the next poem too come, is named after the Spanish word for the Beatitudes. And it too is addressed to my, to my sister. So, Bienaventuranza. Bienaventuranza. Because in my sleep, I call you blank. 
because a cluster of jasmine was surrounded by seawater in the smallest nook of the evening, because there was an archer and a storm that felled a yew tree and a grid of blessings beneath them. Once there were stars for this, charts of flat anxieties filling the telescopic dark, because our sisters vined together like brittle coral halves, because our mother mistook the gardenia, her favorite flower, and Freud's, it seems, for a rose. Because first she carried a broken city, because our grandmother was named after the evangelist as our great grandmothers were the namesakes of lamentation because your lungs were shaped in the bureaucratic hum of mourning. Do you know what mourning is? Because it is full of ancient trees here, because the blonde woman in the time machine who loved our father once describes a people without a history, because our name could make us from here. Because on the day you were born, our mother saw an archangel in the window and the year you were born, the hands of her sister were left in a skylit room because there was a war between them, because that war was in you. Monsote, the will-o'-the-wisps know something of this, the jack-o'-lanterns, the night birds, because one day our mother's brother raced along the highway, pursued by that ever-elusive archangel, crying out, blessed are the pure in heart. Dear blessed, dear curling cork of lightning, I'm thinking of a number between naught and God, and wish you'd tell me. The poet Amada Libertad is a poet I translate and because it, I, I'm haunted by her poems and she was killed in combat in San Salvador in 1991, just before the signing of the peace accords when she was 21. And her poems are full of this incredible urgency that I cherish and think about constantly. So these are two very short poems from her uncollected works. And I'm only going to read them in English in the sake of, of brevity, but I'm happy to share the Spanish if you're interested. Hope. I drill the earth for patience and search it for a sea my breath can then flow into. Because ever since our blood began to course through these streets, I've had no sea left in me. A hurricane comes up with its cold eye. I'm sick with my people, but even so, I fly to the coffee farms to forge in the silence a scripture for you, my people. She liked to make up words or change words in Spanish, and then in a, in a, as a part of a project to create an archive, a dictionary of her Spanish, of her Salvadoran idiom. And this poem, fittingly, is called Dictionary. You're right to set me a hundred words that evoke the speech of my people, but I ask you to see how these leaves know nothing of sacraments or race, and these paths, all they know is sacrifice and misery. For this, you don't need proper spelling. What you need is a hand to take its message to the people. What you need are two feet to coax them toward an abnegated peace. I keep saying that Ad negation must be written with the D of our duress. And I'm going to close with a long poem and a, followed by a short poem. This is a poem that I was recently in conversation with with a group of Salvadoran poets responding to Carolyn Forche's The Colonel in the 40th anniversary of the poem's publication and in the 30 years since the uh, peace accords. And just the, the complex relationship that many of us continue to have with this important poem. And this is my response to it. Late antiquity. And I should preface this by saying that it, it, the names you hear will be the names that my grandfather decided to give to the extremely large family that I come from. And he was a really bookish person who loved Greek mythology, Roman mythology. And it's like the family could be its own Greek pantheon. So it's called Late Antiquity. To the Coriatids and Atlantes of my late last century, Morasan, to Vesta, Minerva, 
Danae, Norma, Parma, Alma Sochi, Mama Lucas called Lucrecia, Leva, your daughter Helen, your daughter Filonoe, Rodas, Hector, Salve America, Zenon, Elia, your sister, Ulises, Ligia, Augusto, Anticlea, Marco Antonio, and you, uncle, I'll call you Marco Antonio the Younger. I sing your names. I place them by the ruins of the house we lost, its compasses and comales and diplomas, the heavy chest for carrying money into town, my great grandmother's parasol, her hats, her hair, the hearts my grandfather kept in formaldehyde, the shattered skull bones with their inner maps of rivers, the photographs, the camera obscura, the chamomile jars, the penicillin, the rooms with their mirrors and the flammable accoutrements of mourning, the coffee and the rice and the soya and the cornmeal at the hearth with beans and chengas and cheese and fresh cut spinach, the rosemary for the bath water, the clucking hens, the Latin grammars, the Greek grammars, the thumb marked glossaries of Neoplatonic philosophy, the annotated Septuagint, the Canto General, the retired rosaries, the revolutionary pamphlets, the parrot's perch, the old sextant, the machetes, the leather bound histories, the medical dictionary, the Spanish dictionaries, the Roque, the Lars, the Salarue, that Lucas called Lucrecia would never be able to read in the cruel lexicography of that inabundant time and the cigars she made, the wood she carved, the ink red geraniums she planted, my mother's drawings, her birds with turquoise tails with russet backs, the crocheted whorls and whorls, the rugs, the toilets, the smell of cypress, the sapuyulo oil, the dinner table set for 20, the chairs for little children, Children, the chairs for growing children, the cushion chair for Lucas called Lucrecia, the armrest chair for Marco Antonio or for you, uncle, the smoother chairs for visitors, the radio box, the slippers, the forks and spoons, the shortage of knives, the pencils, the quills, the propagating aloe and geraniums, the radical newspapers, the coroner's reports, the sandals stained with footprints, the dresses, the satin blouses, the trousers, the socks, the aprons, hovering on the line like stranded floral angels, the tub, the buckets, the homemade soup, the tendrils on the windowsill, the front door, the back door, the lava rocks that prop them open, the windows, the roof, the hymns, the songs about the weather, the internacional, the Luna Lunera, Cascavelera song, the 23rd Psalm, the 91st El Cavita Labrigo del Altísimo Psalm, the Ave Maria, the Pillars of Hercules, the useless atlas of outdated worlds, your pedestals heavy with baskets, with camote, with mango, with ingots, with cinnamon, with doves. How should we excavate? How should we arrange the pieces of your archaeology, of your hands, of the sunlight in your, the, your rooms, of your notebooks, of your art? Maybe Norma standing, Parma standing, Danae holding up the arms of Alma Xochitl, all of you holding Vesta, who was broken, Senon also broken, Elia and Leda gone, and also Helen, who fled the war, and Marco Antonio, who built the house, and Lucas called Lucrecia, who tended the house, and you who held the arches, held the concrete, held the windows, held the doors, the columns, the floors, the cypress, the turquoise bird, all of it gone now, all of it burning, all of it endlessly. It is hard to read that poem. Sometimes I, I can't. But Lucas called Lucrecia is my grandmother. And the turquoise bird is the Toro Vos, which is the, the, the national bird of El Salvador and, and the nickname she had for me. So this final poem is a poem written to her with, with love and gratitude um, as a as an expression of what poetry means to me. So this is called Torobos. I do not know how to sing for you. The poem I am trying to write you cannot exist. You do not speak this language. You cannot read these words. I think in the language you gave me as I think you the language that gives me song. Where are the feet for this verse? Where are its hands? You who know how poignant the body is, give me sheen of turquoise feathers, give me all your colors, give me words to place here and say to myself when I enlist your names at night, not in closed captioning without sound, not in the azure applause of heaven. Here is a basic song. Usted me toma de la mano, 
y me dice toda voz, mi vida. Where is the story here? How do these lines exist? I am singing for you like the soul when it learns a word for itself. Usted me toma de la mano. They say the earth is simple. You say my love. Thank you. And uh, here's Monica. Hello, um, my name is Monica. Thank you, Beth. That was beautiful. Uh, it was beautiful to share space with everyone here. Um, hopefully you can hear me. My dad is in the background and he's drilling. Um, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't care that much about poetry. He's busy fixing things. Um, so I excuse the the drilling in the background if you can hear that. Um, I'm just going to read, um, inspired by Moises' uh, encouragement to read some of the stuff that I wrote um, while I was in Italy. Uh, but I'll start with a poem that um, I had written a while ago, and then I'll, I'll read the drafts. Um, this one is an ekphrasis. It's um, after James Drake, lithograph. James Drake is a artist. Um, originally from Texas, uh, but I think he lives in Santa Fe now. Um, <clears throat> so that's the title. Uh, the local news advises us to have an excavation, an evacuation plan for family and livestock in case of a wildfire. We've been in a drought since 2011. Grass burrs roll across the lawn. The wind comes calling from the south unbothered by architecture or anything in its path. Today in the town square, women gather to show their quilts inside the same building that houses the annual stock show in February. Hogs, cattle, lambs, sheep, penned for auction, bid on by the thousands. In our neighbor's yard, a redbud tree wakes up. It is the second day of Ramadan in the second year of a plague. I'm looking at a stray crow feather fixed on dried leaves, distilling blue under the April sun. Uh, let's see. And then I'll, I'll read one more that I, I wrote during a workshop um, a few months ago. Um, it's just called a uh, keychain. <clears throat> um, three years, three years have gone by since I walked up and down Rafiq Hariri Airport just before I left Beirut for a layover in Copenhagen on the way back to Texas. Cedar trees really do grow everywhere here and nothing has ever tasted better than a shot of a rock on a beach in Batrun. I bought you on the way to the boarding gate, put you in my pocket and we crossed oceans. Remember drinking a Turkish coffee in that old house turned cafe? Where across the street, I could still see the bullet holes in the buildings. I went there nearly every morning until the last day when a taxi took me to the airport and I realized I was alone. You are a portal to a moment before the pandemic became a glitch. Now I can't go outside without a mask and an anxiety attack. My hands scrubbed raw with sanitizer. All these memories are nothing but scales of dreams that continue moving when I finally sleep. I look at you and remember that night along the Corniche where I saw the rocks of the rocks of Rauch in the Mediterranean for the first time, where a couple of men danced to music like lovers saying goodbye before the sea took them. I watched their spontaneous ballet. I read that Rauch was once the kraken whom Medusa's head turned to stone. The men unknowingly stand upon a monster's remains. Suppose this poem is about love. How an emotion shape shifts you. Queerness always feels familiar, even with strangers. Night hides our faces. The platonic turns into the erotic, and our energies recognize desire better in darkness. Now I know why the poets came here and never left. Um, okay, so I'll read these drafts um, that I wrote uh, while I was uh, in Italy a few weeks ago. 
<clears throat> One. I wake up sleepless inside a room overlooking giants, mist peeling over olive trees. Clouds of pleasure and light move to the rooster's ring at 5 a.m. where I am. My body shocks, unsettled story. I imagine Sylvia Winter sitting down to write while I learn to walk, ground opening into fields, house stacked with strangers. Let us consult criticism and ask how to avoid reproducing a spectacle. The Wi-Fi is shy here at Via Pianciani, but I have read news on the election of Maloney, fascism rising, that's what's reported, but fascism never went out of style. Even Godard told us imperialism killed cinema, while Winter wrote that America was a continent of little history. And here, here I am, drinking espresso on a terrace in Italy. This is not a poem about inherited damages. It is an abode on the infinite line of all our small griefs. Um, let's see. Let's read. Uh, uh, these are all short, so um, this is four. Cotton swabs jabbed in the nasal cavity start the morning, thinking about the command shoot to kill in the absence of abolition is the place of surveillance, so we must be secrets. Orchestrated noise, vibrating ambient sounds in space, but without time. Sanctuary isn't for us to protect us, we huddle underneath an awning and embrace safety in the mingled sense of amaretto and tobacco. Where will we go when we aren't here together? Perhaps the afterlife, where queer futuridity waits for our emergence. Um, I read like two more. Um, let's see. Uh, this is two. I ate rabbit last night for the first time. The chefs braised the meat in white wine and paired it with potatoes. I wondered if they boiled it all first. There was rain in the mid-afternoon. Delayed my stroll underneath grapevines. So I walked about the villa inside searching for signs that proved Napoleon had stayed here once, as I had been told earlier. Maybe it's why I feel sick. I've been hunted for three days since I arrived, though different brilliance of greens mean I can count the trees. The mornings are for meditation. The afternoons offer a talk on sonic colonization, that the sounds we produce can be stolen after we are dead, uploaded to a digital archive with limited access. The rhetoric of rootedness provoked me to think about naming and introducing not just myself, but the collective of ghosts that accompany me everywhere I go. Thunder ochres the ground. If you hear the wind, maybe too, maybe you too might experience audio, auditory liberation. Um, cool. And then this will be my last one. Um, this is number nine. Do you remember the pond where we used to fish? Do you remember the catfish that could be caught and frozen to fry another day? Do you remember how to butcher venison perfectly so all the meat fits inside the freezer? Do you remember how I named El Chivo the first day we met in the backyard where he ate grass and weeds and never differentiated food the way I do? I've never tasted goat, not after I saw his carcass hung from the rafter of grandpa's garage already peeled, ready to stew. When my father was a child, his mother would receive surplus once a week from the government. She crafted grits in a hundred different ways for the nine mouths. But now my father refuses to eat them, no matter how much I love them. I've never wanted to leave Texas. I did once and regretted it immediately. I was unprepared for longing, much less loss. Do you remember the way I bawl after I read about floods? Because I knew death rides those waters. Same as a plague that waves through the air and across lands that had names before Europeans came. And now we have parking lots 
7-Elevens, prisons, and fences. Do you remember that we will make tiny, delicious meals of conquistadors yet? Thank you. Well, next we have Sheila Maldonado. I kind of like this baton passing that we've been doing, just like poet into poet into poet and posting yep. the bios in the chat because I just love the barrage of language. So take us there, Sheila. Let's do it. Thank you. Awesome. I, can you hear me? Okay. Um, cool. The internet sort of falls apart and not this part of my apartment. It's amazing to hear you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, all right, let me just jump into it. I don't know what to read, so I'm just going to hop around. I'll read from this a little, and then I have my journal open, all kinds of things open on my computer. So let's see. All right. So this is from the new book, the old book I'm going to just leave behind. And yeah, Winter's Wihitsu. My vagina was your death therapist. City of villains and failures. Some days I can't take my hardline friends. They can't handle my inability to draw a line. Did stop writing at least once to check phone like I'm on call for a job I don't have. There is survival of a genocide in the blood memory. Does that make us as afloat as we are today? I don't know, but there is something essentially crappy. Today I'm focusing on the forms I'm not thinking about the countries exploding, but they're behind us all, exploding their forms. The first lesson of 40 is let go. The people you want don't want to stay. What if you lost your gods or are just finding them again? It is the Ides, a day to kill Caesars, to betray Caesars, a day to fuck Caesars, fuck them over, take the throne. It is a day to take the throne. I am taking a mental health day. Professors do that, take a day. I call myself professor because someone else just did. Schools are asylums, I told them. I've been dealing with some cases and I'm a case myself. Just trying to pick was crazy because just, you know, I'm trying to speak to y'all and hear what you had to say and then speak back and awesome it, it's just like so much grief and weirdness I really like this group of people <laughs> um so this is blood to the hospital it's sort of a translation the first part is English and the second is Spanish blood to the hospital mother solitude blood hospital Father, darkness in the middle. Mother, night, spitting. Dad, dad, dad. Sangre al hospital. Madre en la soledad, escupiendo sangre. Soledad más madre en el hospital. Soledad más sola. No le hacen ni madre en el hospital donde murió padre. Dad, dad, dad. Madre en la oscuridad al hospital de padre. En medio de la noche, sangre en el hospital. Madre en la noche al hospital de sangre, escupiendo padre en la oscuridad. Dad, dad, dad. Um, you mentioned Coney, I think, Oscar, so I'm going to mention Coney. Easter Coney, late 80s. After Christ is risen, the flock moves to the ride seaside, dressed in their resurrection best. White engineer overalls and caps with blue and pink uh, pinstripes, ruffles on socks and pastel leather, tilt a world blurring. A chill sets in on a candy cloud. Our Lord joins the fashion masses for Technicolor sunset. The safety bar comes down. He holds on in cold neon, screaming on the breezes. He the fish, he the lamb on the rabbit isle, Easter Conejo, Conaina Island, Coney Island, Easter Island, mutable man on mutable land, celebrating his outlaw peoples in their ketchup slacks, sand scuffing shoe shine, delirious machine spitting, 
above oily wooden slats before the grimy water. In front of the Himalaya, the lamb comes down for his crown, sliding outside the ride to the selector of the spinning chairs. The fish, the fish clutches his cap, gets slippery. And then I'm gonna do one more. Actually, let me move on. I'm gonna just jump around some more. Um, to some Honduras stuff that I've been trying out. Uh, you know, I kind of suck at it, writing about the hardest thing in the world, which is Honduras. It's easier to write about New York. So yeah, um, let's just jump into it. So this is Toque de Queda, New York, June, 2020. Toque de Queda is cool, is cool in Spanish. So pretty a word, so a phrase in Spanish. Beautiful curfew day. All of us will have the night taken from us. Don't ask me what Honduras is like again. There I lived through a revolution, bougie like two. We hid in our homes, accepted house arrest. We watched the TV tell us how to make traditional dishes. We stayed away from the revoltosos. My mother was the state. All her words, smacks. I wanted to go where all the tires were burning. She wanted me alive, mad at her, alive. Here I can move about, walk. I know my way. I've been on my own in this city, in this apocalypse. I write apocalypse a lot, all I have ever written about. Blood memory of the end, turbulent with recognition. I talked to my mother on the phone, altered. Su hija revuelta, surviving lockdowns without her. I often turn to all that is wrong. She won't hear a rant. Have to remind myself our speech must keep the peace. Can't blow my cover. This is Fruit Survivor. Fruit Survivor. I've known all the survivors of the depths, was raised by them, put in my place by them. Happy Land Survivor. Hurricane Fifi survivor, Hurricane Mitch survivor, Hurricane Eta Eyota survivor, double hurricane survivor, first coup in the 21st century in Latin America survivor, first coup in 20 years in Latin America survivor, Iran Contra survivor, 80s counterinsurgency based survivor, secret Vietnam survivor, caravan survivor, soccer war survivor, 100 hours war survivor, banana plantation survivor, United Fruit, Standard Fruit, Cuyamel Fruit survivor, Every American president in the 20th century survivor, every Honduran president in the 20th century survivor, Northern Triangle survivors, murder, ca murder capital of the world survivors, border cage child survivors, backward, invisible, forgotten, erased survivor, always spoken of but never spoken to survivor, wouldn't speak to you anyway survivor, trauma is a joke survivor, slur survivor, survivor, serve survivor, not from here or there, survivor, never enough, survivor. No one knows who you are. And when you tell them, they don't believe you because it's not their idea of who you are, survivor. No one really cares, survivor. A survivor of surviving, a survivor of survivors. Um, all right. I don't know if I can do any more of that stuff. All right, uh, I'm gonna go to some of the stuff uh, that's like Maya related. I always deal with like ancient Maya stuff because it's an old obsession and that's what I claim I'm writing about all the time. Um, so this is Maya inspired stuff um, from a residency a little while ago. Window on my part-time employer in the one building that was once two. I'm writing to the building of writing that is continually giving us the boot. Writing alone can't hold it up. I want to say writing created it, but it might have just assisted. And yet writing is its own building. Writing extends the building. I'm from a long line of building extenders, a line that was broken. That line can be broken. It can be outlawed and driven out of town. The word finding refuge in the mountain, the mouth, the memory. It can be fired and replaced a thread erased, it can't all be put down. It rises up, an ancestor told me. 
A few ancestors told me that. I will be an ancestor telling you to rise up. But as a present day person, I tend to lay there. I've been thrust from the building of letters, syllables, characters. They're scattered and I lack the will to gather them. It is fine to lay among them, let them scramble. Eventually I will get up and put them together again. It won't be like I imagined, it will be. Immediate postscript. For a minute there, my keyboard stopped working. I was talking about letters and they wouldn't come. I did not lay calmly. It was not a calm, it was a panic. I am wrong to say I could be so calm. I would fight for a while. I would fight to get back to the letter, to get back to the building, fight to make a new one. And this last one is based on what was left of this mural. Oh, actually this mural when it was more intact, it's really famous, um, the images, it's Yashilan, Lintel 25 in Chiapas. You know, that crazy, ridiculous border that's not, you know, it's bullshit that's like between Guatemala, Belize and Mexico. That is all my country, you know, really. Um, the rituals must be recorded. So this is what's left of the mural. If you go online on Instagram, I did this whole thing called Ish Seeb. And uh, that's really the project in a lot of ways, this damn Instagram thing. I'll put it in there, Ish Seeb. I do a lot of picture stuff because I can't write anymore. <laughs> well, actually, Ish Seeb is, you know, the little alter ego, <laughs> Kini Shahao. <laughs> so this is remnants of it. The rituals must be recorded. The scholars tell me this is Lady Ka'abal Shuk wearing the fat rounded cross-like emblem of her Lord Bird Jaguar on her wheatbeel, her dress, the cloth. Bird Jaguar is with her in another doorway carving before this one pictured. There she let blood with a rope through her tongue while kneeling before him. He's standing in warrior garb and she's at his waist level. In this carving here shown as a drawing, she is looking up at the vision of herself as a warrior goddess. The goddess version of her emerges from the mouth of a snake made from the smoke of her blood burning on a rope and cloth in a bowl before her, the vision serpent, Ka'awil. A scholar told me it is white boned. What scholars tell you is subject to change. For instance, before they thought it was bird jaguar coming out of the serpent head, but they read the glyphs again and saw it was a lady. Actually, they did not know it wasn't bird jaguar, but they weren't sure it was a woman. Anything I tell you is subject to change. It is a ritual recorded upon the accession of bird jaguar to the throne. He is taking his place. The lady honors it with this vision right. The sculptor scribe honors it with this carving. The ritual must be recorded. We might never know its full meaning, but someone did. As much as modern day scholars read now, they are translating a thousand year old language that mainly elites understood then. It is esoteric today, much less a thousand years ago. I am mostly about the vision server because who wouldn't be? Look at it and it's gaping maw. It has a double head. I used to think the warrior was part of the snake but I wasn't looking well enough. That was most of the scholarship, looking closer and closer, re-seeing, getting a better version to work from, a sharper picture, a clearer drawing. I am here to get closer, live with this image that has occupied my mind for so long. How a vision is made, how an image is made, how writing is made from image, how a story is made from sight, how we've been telling this story for a long time. We've been doing this forever. How we were some of the first to do it. I say we, cause I think I'm these people on the wall and I will believe I am their blood for as long as I bleed. My blood burning on a rope, in the smoke, I see them as me. I'm on bent knee, bent neck, in my weepy, looking up at the warrior goddess version of me. I bow backward before the spear I brandish. I'm delirious from the blood leaving my tongue. That's it. Thank you, guys. Oh my God. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Sheila. And closing us out is Raquel Gutierrez. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Thank you. That was incredible, Sheila and um, Yvette, uh, MTO, Moy. Thank you so much for this incredible morning. I am here on the Pacific uh, Standard Time representing the time zone. And so uh, I really appreciate this invitation um, a week before this eclipse. And so one thing to consider is that my fixed square 
uh, at two and three degrees is a, mm. uh, is a, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. And so with that said, um, this, I'm going to read a couple poems, uh, from, uh, my collections, uh, Southwest Street Construction. And so this poem is called Fluent Dragon Luster, a Desert Divination. A broken wingspan stretched along the I-10, Los Angeles and Tucson, Los Angeles to Tucson. I hate this birth in the rear view. Another being bred on rice and beans, a Renaissance painting, malformed info, make nympho and scars and arsenal a wash. I won't stop until I find a ruby in the rubble for you. Prickly halo, Madonna eyes, rebirthing lover's gaze, los ojos amorosos, lying in the arms of the cacti, memorize. A slice of cactus cake finds a mirror in the frosting circumference, a proxy. I drive and read these roads. The desert could be my temple in the way that the desert is just a mine. Copper off and now will never be mine. I'm here to claim my dead, mile markers marking terrain car rolling, looking, look, where am I going? Manuscripts unfolding upon sordid heavens, the paper thunder soaked, birth wet, parchment, sticking in understand, clay membraned blood and button flied placenta. Part the clouds, a vulva satellite, y la madre quien te parió. My hands, wrist, my arms, elbow, shoulder, deepened disparo. Pull the birth, this baby I am looking for. I can eye this child in Caliche, another's house, a language, a crumbling edge, a fertile ruin, an incandescent undone. Two laned monstrous coming and going there and here, where and when beginning to end. What have I done? The juncture, a bearing, admission into the earth, the redder, the deader, circle the cacti. It's a crossroads in my skin. All right. And let me get to paper now. This one is called Woke Folks Make It Okay to Get Baked. I caught the precarious life of another coyote magic trick. Panicking like dogma, a star-crossed pattern hatched across an unaffordable sky. Hovering above our winter desert getaway, yellow, white, red, and black, every four directions got an Airbnb for you. And me, hot tub under the stars. These are the mythological stripes of the libertarian hinterland. I get the dopamine back upon waking, a Uranus opposition or what Joshua Tree gives me when my excess found austerity. A party house booked when sorry sorrow took my clue to blow her exit cue against time. Butch don't kill my vibe. Hear the moon song dream stutter washing over jumbo rocks until it disappears. Fuck me as a sun rocket cheers inside another burning pale blue pyre. Here comes the ancient good times where I get pulled over. A passport and a sage bundle sends me on my way. I love the unpaved roads of Joshua Tree, the cool poverty, the acceptable shakes, the paycheck to pay back, the aging hipster economy. Invite me to parties and I feel myself like manifest destiny's child. But I will cut this pack of tricksters when they try to take my dog, my familiar, the last frontier, my boundaries unspooled. All right. And this is um, a very, very new poem. And I was mentioning to Moy and the gang here on the um, the eclipse as a, uh, the, the root coming into abandonment or that abandon is a root into eclipse and uh, having a really powerful uh, reading with a psychic about my crisis of abandonment. So this poem is called On the Crisis of Abandonment. Well, it's the middle of my life now and just about every day I mistake aviation parkway for the ocean and the buzz of bustling vehicles eschewing speed limits unbothered with the fact of death in the foreground of this infrastructural monster. Every day in the middle of my life now, I expect the javelina, 
lying in its halo of mushroom fuzz, and greet its decomposition hastened by the summer heat of an unfathomable season. I yield to my own promise of decomposition as alluring to forge a new life someday, somehow, and for someone else in the elsewhere. Your life wasn't for nothing that it made a difference to the funny thing we call kin. A large husk that once hurled and shouted climax into a void, it wasn't concerned with anyway. For some make a pretty good life in the rubble of other people's trash. A peccary in the muck of concrete and oil slick, of monsoon garbage, or the slippage where the 18-wheeler impressed upon with the force to twist its barrel-chestedness on the shoulder of the frontage road. No one dreams of dying alone, but these are the dreams to seize upon and feast in defeat. If you did it right, you are remembered for the reputation you lost defending against the new grain of patrimony, the sublimated rages, the busted neon sign of throbbing power differentials. You are remembered for being stingy with your time, demanding promissory notes for the granular pains in the factory you thought improved upon the last factory. Where to mine a mild mercy as the hum of the parkway wanes in your folded ear, dear Javelina? You don't see what's coming, but feel the fear flooding like cortisol, phlegm to a punctured lung. Consider my decomposing body on the side of the parkway and lay a bouquet of pink flowers in front of my snout and forget the wild boar inside myself, but smell the sweetness in the afterlife of another Zoom meeting. Will I die by some less impressive machine of the blue halo, the screen screaming for another mode of lymphatic recreation I so desperately fathom? When I mistake Aviation Parkway for the ocean, it's a temporary sensory deprivation of forgetting I live next to a freeway wall. Goat head burrs the need for virality that ensured a livelihood. We go through each other's trash in this neighborhood and wonder about the last thing left unsaid. What if I said the name of a color three times? Would the image of forgiveness forgo the olive branch? These images don't sustain me anymore, and for that I worry and wait for the sun to come and guide me back to the marked grave to see what other creatures have come along to feed on the fungus of your body. Thank you. And that's that for me, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Raquel. Thank you, Oscar, so much for putting together this amazing reading. And um, thank you to all, all the readers, Monica, Sheila, um, and, um, oh, sorry, hang on a sec here, and Yvette. Um, this was wonderful. The recording of the reading will be up on the Rails website and also on the Rails YouTube channel, probably in a matter of days. So please feel free to go back and uh, relive the experience and circulate the link. And we'll have another reading next week put together by uh, Ann Tardos. And I guess now's the moment where we can throw the mics open and everyone can say hello and goodbye and go off into the rest of the day. Thank you all so much. Thanks Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Thank, Thank you, you, Chloe. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Team Brooklyn <laughs> Rail. Thank Bye, poets. Thank you. It's good to see everyone. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Sheila, amazing. Incredible. Oh, we're so cool.